Hi, how are you going? So in the next couple of videos, what I'm going to do is give you guys a run through of the setup menus and taking a basic measurement in regards to our Svan 9, 5 and 9, 7 series. So I'm going to start it with the older units, the 955, 959, 957. And then we're going to go on to the 971, 977 and 979, show you how to set them up, do a basic measurement and what to do with the data once you've done that. So let's start as you guys all know on off button alt and start to turn it on it's going to run through its setup menu so let's just wait a few moments 60 second countdown warm-up timer usually for colder climates so i'm just going to skip that in australia we should be fine now already we have a display on the instrument as you can see sound pressure level a fast filter profile one right while i'm here if you just press down arrow this is only for the 95 series just press the down arrow you can go through all of the displays so once i press start some things will come up and then we can have a look so let's step into the menu so shift menu we have our function we have our mode so you can use this as a vibration meter with uh, taking off the tnc adapter sv80 coil cable we're doing a sound measurement today so we're going to go down to measurement function now this is where you can select what measurement parameters you want, FFT, RT60, dose meter options. I'm going to do one third octave measurement, that's pretty standard for a lot of clients. Press enter to save, and then we're going to go down to the calibration. So let's go calibration by measurement using an acoustic calibrator. I've got the SV30A here, class 1 dual level. So what we're going to do is just pop the microphone into the acoustic calibrator, make sure the level is selected of whichever level you need. I'm going to do 114 because that's what the instrument already has. So we have an output as per NADA calibration standards, 114.02. So I'm going to increase this level on the instrument to 114.02. So once you enter the output level of the acoustic calibrator, just press start to run a calibration. Try be quiet during this time. Once that's done, we're going to press enter to confirm. So what we can do now, press escape, escape. I'm just going to place off the acoustic calibrator and we're going to go back into some other measurement menus. So let's press escape down to input, measurement setup. This is basically where all of the logging parameters come into play. A start delay, do you want to start it after 30 seconds, one minute? This is where you can start it. Integration period, typically for environmental monitoring, 15 minute periods. Infinite cycles, for example, you're logging, you know, weekly, daily, that sort of thing. So each 15 minutes, there's going to be another period rollover after that. Do you want the logger on or off? We are saving logging parameters. So we want a logger file. We're going to tick that on. Um, Medio station, we're not so concerned about. Logger step, one second. And here you can name the logger file name. Don't use too many characters. Just keep it simple. Press enter to save. Measurement range. Pretty straightforward, low or high. Typically, people are going to be measuring low ranges of noise, so press enter on whichever you require. And then we have profile one, two, and three. So as you know, Svantec sound level meters run three profiles simultaneously, basically like having three instruments running simultaneously. Fantastic feature, easy to navigate around. Profile one, typically A, fast. Tick everything on or don't tick it. Just This is up to you guys what you want in the logging in the data at the end, so in your log file. I'm going to leave it all on for argument's sake. C fast, you can change this to whatever you want. Enter profile three, Z fast for our Z weighting measurements. Enter as well to save. Now we have our spectrum set up. So this is in regards to one third octave data, which we set up just in the measurement function. You can have a filter of A or Z. Logger is on and leave it like that. So enter to save. Now that's it in regards to input. In the 9.5 series, that takes us to files. So this is one of our crucial parts with the 9.5 series. There is an auto save option. Move to save options. So just take note for 9.55, 9.59, 9.57, this is essential to save some of those logging parameters. We will have a result file, but not a logger file. So what you need to do is click on auto save, tick it on. I'm gonna tick off RAM file because we don't use that so much. Save statistics. So Environmental logging, L10s, L90s, LNs. This is where the statistics will come in. Um, direct save, save Medio Station. Once again, we don't do too much of that, so you can play around with it. Enter to save. It's going to ask you to name the file. Once again, keep it simple. Don't use too many characters. It'll just make things a bit complicated down the line. Enter to save. Free space on the instrument. That'll tell us how much space is left. So, 9.5 series. 
we have 30 megabytes of data. We got 15 megabytes split into result files, which is your statistical data summary results. And we have 15 megabytes based on logging data, so time history, weekly data, that sort of thing. So depending on what logging parameters you have, one might feel quicker than the other. You'll have to play around with it, see how it goes. Last option here is the setup file. We have language. Do you want to completely clear the setup? Compensation filters. I left it on off for the calibration. Though I'm going to tick it on a free field compensation just because we're going to be using a standard SA22 windsock. RTC, real time clock is in regards to the clock on the instrument. When you plug it into your PC, you'll be able to update that automatically to the computer's time. Now the rest is pretty interchangeable. Please play around with it. You can set up timers, all sorts of different stuff on different days. USB host. If you're going to use a USB disk to save data to this instrument, because as I said, it doesn't have the biggest memory, then this is where you'll select it. So basically put your USB disk in, select here, enter, and it's going to count the amount of free available data on the USB disk. Once that's done, there'll be an icon at the top to show us that the USB is connected. Now, once this is done, I'm going to press escape. I'm happy with how it's set up. I'm going to press start. Bottom right hand corner, we press start. As I just mentioned, straight away we have three profiles running simultaneously. They can be used as three different sound level meters. For example, SPL. If you want to change what you're seeing there, LAEQ, you've got uh, SEL, LDs, we've got 0, 1s, overall levels, times, peaks, max, mins, lots of different things to play around with. If we press the down arrow, it's going to take us to a larger display of one profile. If we press the shift and right arrow, that will change the profile. So A, C, Z. So for example, let's go back to A. I'm going to press the down arrow file name of what this file is. So for example, if we're in a room, we do a measurement, we press stop on the measurement. That will be our file name. So for example, you just want to write it down on your clipboard. Room 1 was R14. It'll pop up on the instrument once you press stop. You know exactly which room which file was. I'm going to press start on the measurement once again and rotate through. We have our statistical levels as mentioned, L90s, L99s. This is all interchangeable. Play around with it if you're in the field need statistical data. Scroll down and also our frequency analysis. So. The uh, frequency is on the bottom right hand corner and you can rotate through all of the frequency bands on a one third octave filter. Uh, Z weighted RMS values as you guys know. And that takes us back to our three profiles running simultaneously. Now I'm just going to show you how to interpret this data on a PC. Um, so we'll take it from there. Cheers.